We're good? Yes. Amazing. Good morning, friends. We are thrilled that you are here. This is Worldwide Communion Sunday. So all, all across the time zones, folks will be receiving this holy meal across God's created globe. Which is, and this is also commun, uh, Confirmation Sunday for us. We have a, a class of confirmands that um, did not get confirmed because we could not gather to do that until now. And so what a great day on World Communion Sunday. We're going to celebrate these families, celebrate these confirmands, and uh, we thank you for coming. It's our honor to host you and to proclaim God's will to you. And so um, we're beginning a new message series. Um, we are beginning a new message series today, Follow the Breadcrumbs. Follow that lead us to God's love. Follow the breadcrumbs that lead us to God's love. And that's what we want you to do. So it'll be an interesting morning and we're looking forward to it. So let's, um, let's enjoy our prelude and then our opening hymn. Michael.
invite you to join with me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we come to our prayer time, we are mindful that all over the globe, folks are breaking the bread and receiving the cup, and God's love endures forever. God's love overshadows every one of us. We continue to pray for Jacob Hunter, who's having a strong dose of chemo right now. Pray for his endurance. Endurance. We pray for our confirmants and their families. Oh my goodness, what a day. I pray that you don't already know everything that the faith means. That's not our goal in confirmation. Our goal in confirmation is to inspire you to lifelong learning, a journey with God, a journey with Jesus. And so I pray that prayer for every one of you as well. I pr pray that you haven't finished your learning about God. I pray that you have a vital walk and that you are a true disciple, which means student of Jesus. I know you are. And, and before, um, you know, we're coming to a beautiful, sensitive time of prayer. But I also pray for Dr. Michael Martin, whose birthday it is today. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Michael my friend, happy birthday to you. So on your birthday we pray God's blessing upon every note you play and every note they sing, every note we sing and may it be with the purest spirit. Thank you for journeying with us. Let's pray together.
hill far away stands an old rugged cross. And Lord, in our mind's eye, we see it still. We pray that you will help us to understand what happened there. And as we receive this holy meal given to us at great sacrifice, we understand is its nourishment and its repurposing of our lives. Lord, I pray that if we have anyone coming here with a heavy heart, help them to use this worship, help them to use this table to lay their burden down and with, when they go forth from this place, help them to not pick, it, pick up their burden, help them to not pick up their burden again. And we pray for these confirmands. It's a signpost, it's a mile marker confirmation when we pause and say yes to Jesus. Not because we have arrived, but because you get us going. You enliven our step on the journey and you help us to focus on certain things. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength and love our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, we long to do just that. So I pray for disciples of every age that are in this room that have and in the online worshiping community that we continue to learn, to kin continue to deepen our faith, continue to understand how you are shaping us through it and Give us also words to say when we share our faith with others. So we pray for these on our prayer list. We pray for our global community. And we pray this prayer in the name of Christ who teaches us to say when we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now we come to a wonderful time of communion and Pastor Jean has a few words to speak with us about what this journey has been. It is a great day, it's a holy day. A chance for our young to confirm in front of their congregation, those of you who have been nurturing them all of their lives. My name is Pastor Jean, for those of you who don't know me, and I serve as a youth pastor and, and also the pastor over our missions. And I've had the privilege of leading confirmation classes for the last 15 years, co-leading it with Donna Winnicky. And each class is special in its own way. And up to this time, this, it, it, it was brought to my attention that not everybody understands confirmation because maybe you came from a different uh, uh, background of faith. And so I, I just wanted to share a little bit about what is confirmation. It's that time when, it, at that stage in your life when you're starting to have to make decisions for yourself. At that time, and it's typically in middle school in, in, because you are entering a building and you don't have parents around you, to, you don't have just one teacher, you have many teachers and, and so you know, you're starting to make decisions 
according to whatever you're thinking at that moment. And so this is a good time to, to capture that thought and, and uh, know who it is you follow. Because if you're not following Christ, you're following someone else. And we want you to follow Christ in your life, in your, in your daily routine. So during this time, they take a look at their habits of prayer, how they're doing with reading scripture and understanding. Some of them are, are gathering ideas of, of certain scriptures that really are very meaningful to them. They have opportunities to serve in the church as well as outside of the church because that's what, that's what Jesus did. If you followed Jesus, you would be reaching out to people that are beyond our walls. So um, they, they, are, they learned about how to call upon the Holy Spirit. And maybe even some people are, are getting better at li really listening to the Spirit within their life. And, and so we're hoping that at the end of this time, they are, are focused on doing as much good as they possibly can in this world. I'm grateful to be a part of this church especially because when, when they were baptized as a congregation, we said that we agreed to nurture them and to help guide them and teach them along with their parents. And we have done a terrific job. We, we, we have a wonderful Kidman program with uh, Pastor Amy and many of you have taught with her and have had these uh, same youth in a class or maybe you've done VBS or maybe you even went to a station that was manned by some of the youth that were, in other words, they were actually part of the teaching at that time. So you, we have, you have led by example, and, and that's, that's so critical. And uh, your generosity towards them, your encouragement of them, your support of them in, in their mission projects and times when they just need to know that there's other, other adults out there that can, can help them, you've been there, you've been there. So, well, I do want you to know this, that, that uh, confirmation is not the end of their spiritual journey. It truly is the beginning. They're taking this, the faith that you professed when they were baptized, they're taking that and making it their own and, and, and doing it in their own style or in their own way, or, but, but they're still doing it. They're doing it for themselves. I wanna thank the parents for all that you have done, because we can't, this isn't a, a, a church, this is a, this is a partnership that we have between the church and our families that we're work, trying to work together in a way that is most meaningful for you. So there have been many people in your lives that have really been leading the way for you. And so now, at this time, we're, go we're going to uh, confess what we believe in and do our vows. Thank you, Pastor Jean. Thank you, Pastor Jean. One of the things that's great about this church is that um, we have such a vital approach to experiential learning of the faith. So there are literally hundreds of things that your children may have participated in, likely have participated in some, and we thank you for that. We thank you, I thank you for that, Gene, because that's a very great vitality. And, and one senior a couple years ago said to me, and I, I, I will, I will uh, remember this always, she said, you know, I, I learned a lot uh, by going to my school, which was a Christian school, but I learned to be a Christian at New Albany Methodist through all of these ex experiences they've had. So now we turn to confirmation, and um, if we could have the confirmands stand, if you'd stand up, just stand in place for right now. Stand where you are. Nope, not yet. Okay. Um, so, brothers and sisters in Christ, through confirmation, we renew the covenant declared at your baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to.
Christ's holy church. Now we've got some questions for you. We're going to give you a chance to answer the questions, and we want to be sure to hear what you're saying, because we want to know that you really, really mean these things. So let us hear it. Do you reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression? If so, say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior? Put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, all nations, and all races. If so, say, I do. Now we're going to invite you to do that scary thing and turn around to the congregation. And actually, my question is for the congregation, so listen what they are going to say to you because it's really cool. Will you all present here today and the online listening worshiping community, will all of you representing the New Albany Methodist family of faith support and encourage each of these confirmands who stand before you. Support them all the way in their Christian life. If so, say it like you mean it. We will. We will. Did you hear that? I think I still hear an echo of what they said. And now we're going to invite the families to come, family by family, to come forward for the rite of Christian confirmation. Yeah. Grace Olivia Dybeck, be thou confirmed in the church of Jesus Christ and live in the light of his love. And everybody says, as you mean it, we will. Yeah. Amen. Back to your seats. Come this way. <laughs> Congratulations. <clears throat> Kaylin Danielle Lample. Be thou confirmed in the church of Jesus Christ and live in the light of his love. Amen. And all the people said amen. Amen. Congratulations. Stand on Alexander. 
Alexander Ritter, be thou confirmed in the church of Jesus Christ and live in the light of his love. Amen. Amen. Ethan Ritter, be thou confirmed in the church of Jesus Christ and live in the light of his love. Amen. Amen. Houston Riz Ritter, be thou confirmed in the church of Jesus Christ and live in the light of his love. Amen. Amen. It's a lot of hands, isn't it? <laughs> Caden Robert Russell, be thou confirmed in the church of Jesus Christ and live in the light of his love. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. from me as members of the household of faith this family of faith will you faithfully participate and all of you new confirmands are part of are newly a part of this family of faith as of this moment will you faithfully participate in his ministries by your prayers your presence your gifts and your service if so say it like you mean it we will to the household of god i commend these confirmands to your love and care may you do all in your power to increase their faith confirm their hope and perfect their love let us pray Oh God, we thank you for this opportunity to share in this sacred, holy moment in the lives of these young men and women. We thank you for all that you have already done to be at work in them and through them. And we thank you for their witness today as they have claimed their faith and reminded us what it means to claim ours. We thank you for those who have helped them to learn and to grow and for your Holy Spirit that has drawn all of us into your loving arms. Oh God, we look forward to journeying together as we all seek to learn and grow and draw closer to you. Amen. This is an exciting day. What do churches offer more than this? Plant the seeds of faith in young hearts. And you know and I know that they will be richly blessed all their days. I look out across this room and I realize some of you were the ones who held these little ones in the nursery. Some of you taught them to sing God's song. Some of them you taught them how to say 
the Lord's Prayer. Some of you taught them, Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. So we give back to God because God is first so generous towards us and we thank our online con congregation, we thank our in-person congregation, we thank those of you have, who have been so faithful through these unusual times. And Pastor Amy is going to have a prayer to bless our offering in advance. Let us pray. Oh God, you are so generous with us. You are the sovereign of the universe, and yet you call us your sons and daughters. You have created us, you know us, and you love us with a love that is beyond anything that we can imagine. Oh God, we give today in response to the love and grace that you have given to us, and we pray that you will receive this offering, receive our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service. May our offerings reach out to bring hope and grace to our near and distant neighbors, whom you also know and love. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Our scripture today comes from 1 Corinthians 11, 23b to 26. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of God for the people of God. Pastor Jean, thank you, Pastor Jean. Will you pray with me? Oh, dear and gracious God, speak with us this day. Call us, claim us, make us your own. Amen. I meant, might mention um, we have started having a choral benediction response, which is really worth hearing. So I can encourage us to stay in our pews until the choir is done singing after the benediction, and you will be richly blessed. Our, our birthday, birthday boy guarantees it. <laughs> okay, we are starting a new message series. Follow the breadcrumbs. Finding your way to God. And we, on this day, remind our confirmands that this is not the end of your Christian discipleship being formed by God, by Jesus' lessons. God desires to lead us to him. God desires to lead us to the divine all our lives through in our many seasons. And you have lived long enough to have had some intense seasons of your lives and have needed God very much. So in the fairy tale of Hansel and Gretel, children drop breadcrumbs so that they will be able to find their way home. And I am going to suggest in this message series that God also drops breadcrumbs so that we can find our way home to his love. And sometimes we are known to wander off. You know that, I know that. It's true of every one of our lives. So God helps us find our way through breadcrumbs. Spiritually, we need God's help finding our way forward, especially in confusing and uncertain times. And so this series is going to help us spot God's breadcrumbs along the way as God leads us to paths of purpose and peace. So let's get started. Uh, Max Lucado writes about Patrick Hughes. Patrick Hughes and his son, Patrick Hughes. Lucado writes, he's the old guy in the Louisville Cardinal marching band. You can't miss him. Everyone, everyone else is college age. He's middle age. Everyone else wears a band uniform. He wears a windbreaker and a wool cap. Everyone else plays an instrument. Patrick John Hughes pushes 
a wheelchair. The wheelchair contains his son, Patrick Henry Hughes, a blind, differently abled musical genius. Young Patrick was born March 10, 1988, so this was a little while ago. The moment he entered the world, the good, good news became bad news. Doctors quickly discovered that his arms and legs would not straighten. And his eyes, he didn't have any. The older Patrick was shell-shocked. He dreamed of raising his son, planned a backyard baseball diamond. They were going to have hours and hours of fun running the bases, catching pop flies. Pop, pop flies. But now, his son later wrote these words. On the day I was born, you might say I arrived carrying a bag of lemons. And I think my family would have preferred oranges. But you can't turn lemons into oranges, no matter how hard you try. Mom and Dad taught me you have to hang in there. And once you do, you'll discover that lemons also can be pretty cool. So Patrick's parents hung in there, all right. His father noticed that his infant son, by placing in him on top of the piano and playing it, would be calmed. And I'm, I'm, I hear the echo of our family in that. Joe had colic when he was young, and when I sang to him, he would be called, saying, I've been working on the railroad. And Joe has learned to sing that song to his own son. And I sang, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. So the father noticed that the infant son by placing him on top of the piano and playing it would be calmed. The music connected. By nine months, young Patrick was tapping on the keys. By age two, he was playing requests. In elementary school, he played concerts. In high school, he was a member of the state band and the state chorus in Kentucky. He graduated with a 3.0 from high school. By the time he arrived at Louisville, the University of Louisville, his piano and trumpet skills were well known, and the band director invited him to join the marching band. A uh, uh, wheelchair in the halftime show? They rigged a special wheelchair with bigger and wider wheels. The teenager and the dad gave it a go that summer at band camp, 12 hours a day, ducking the tubas and dashing to the right spot, trying not to wipe out the wind section. Young Patrick said, Dad hasn't dumped me yet. And it appears he never will. Every school day, the father pushed his son to class and sat near him during the lectures and whispered any les lessons that were written on the blackboard. Then while the rest of the family went to bed, the father left to work the graveyard shift He'd get home about 6 a.m., sleep a few hours, and then he would start it all over again. But this father never complains. He used to say, older Patrick said, we used to say, why us? Now we say, why us? Why 
are we so lucky? So you may be wondering why I'm telling you this story because it is a metaphor of God's love for you. He never dumped you yet and he never will. You know, we maybe this morning, maybe someone in this room is struggling with your limitations or struggling with stress and anxiety or is wondering what the future will hold. But this day, this is the day I remind you that God has made for you a place at his table. You know, we begin our days, most days, uh, FaceTiming with Joe and Christelle who live in Nashville, uh, my, uh, our son, our son and daughter-in-law. And, and w usually we see our grandson Axel sitting in his high chair. That's the first image that comes on the screen. And to his left, his dad, and to his right, his mom. And I bet in your, t in your house, you have had a place at the table. And some people, when uh, somebody else is born, the, then you make more, uh, more space at the table. And God says, I always have space at my table for you. Let me show you the way. And so, this is just a gentle reminder that over time, you will see how God loves you more and more. You will see how God helps you over time more and more. God is behind you, nudges you. God is before you, pulls you along. God is your so source of light on your path. God will guide you with God's assuring hand. That's God's promise. And then in your life, you will see God's breadcrumbs. How he always longs to bring you back to the table. So today is Worldwide Communion Sunday and it's the first time you get to receive communion in a new way as a member of the family of God. And we, I, am so excited for you. And in this case, you also get to be servers. So, Pastor Gene, will you help us? You don't need to be a member of this church. You don't need to be a member of any church to receive this holy meal. If you desire to feast with God, with Jesus, he desires to welcome you. So Christ, so Christ invites you to his table invites all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us quietly, personally, confess our sin to Almighty God. Will you bow? Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ by the suffering of his baptism and death and resurrection you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread and he give, gave it to 
you and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. And if you will echo back to me, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, Make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Father Almighty, now and forever. Amen. And as our servers find their way to their stations, our ushers will begin to dismiss you to come forward. We're going to come forward by the side aisles and return by the center aisle. Ed, can you help us with that? And we'll start with the back rows.
And so God offers breadcrumbs. Our choir members are helping us by making sure the choir gets a chance to partake. God offers breadcrumbs. Things you notice on your way that God has a specific word for you. Something that meets you where you are. I talked, with, uh, talked about this with uh, Greg Trout this week. He said, I remember at one specific moment in time when I really needed it, God sent a shooting star. The first one I'd ever seen. Right at that moment. What do you wait for? What do you long for? The first colors of spring, the turning of the colors on the hillsides in the autumn, that snowflake that comes upon us. The first notes that our choir sings when they're back in season. You know what I wait for. And the ability to harmonize. The God-given ability to harmonize. So, follow the breadcrumbs all the way home to his love. The love he has for you. Michael?